Hello everyone. Welcome to the second of the series of job search workshops. Today's workshop is going to focus on online job searching. My name is Ben Irwin. I'm a job developer with the City of Windsor Employment and Training Services. Uh, we help uh, job seekers uh, find employment, help get connected to job opportunities in Windsor and Essex County. Today we're going to talk about a number of things uh, with regard to your online job search. Uh, the first thing we're going to go through is some popular job search websites and some tools that are available to job seekers online. We'll then get into some tips for your online job search, uh, talk about your social media accounts and specifically about LinkedIn and we will encourage you to get a LinkedIn account. And then finally we're going to provide some um, instructions on how to sign a PDF and the reason why that's important is um, increasingly employers are sending applications through email or PDF documents are available online even if you're signing contracts, real estate contracts, banking documents, things like that. Uh, you can do those things with your mobile phone, you can do it with an Android or an Apple or even on your desktop so we're going to give you instructions on how to do that. So firstly on the screen you'll see a number of websites uh, these are just a few of the tools available online to job seekers um, and I'm going to go through each of them and just give you a quick uh, synopsis on what they're, uh, what they're there for, if they're uh, job posting boards or tools with, with information about uh, important information for job seekers. Uh, so starting with Employment and Training Services. Employment and Training Services does have our own website where we post job postings uh, that are we're recruiting for with the employers that we work with. Uh, to get to the job postings, you'll go to the City of Windsor website, citywindsor.ca. And when you get there, uh, go to For Residents at the top, and then click on Employment and Training Services. So this is our main page that describes all the services available through our office. If you go in the uh, menu on the left hand side you'll see job opportunities and this will be where we post again all the job opportunities through our job developers uh, that we're recruiting for uh, with our employers. I find Kijiji to be a good site to go to uh, to find short term or contract type work but it's also being utilized to uh, post all types of jobs because employers can post their jobs for free. So we're just going to go to kijiji.ca and you can see at the top here jobs. We're going to click there and you can uh, narrow your search to uh, different industries on the left here but we're going to go to see all jobs and that'll give us a listing of all the jobs available. So currently there's 439 ads uh, for employment in uh, in and around the Windsor Essex area so you can see anything from HVAC installers to AZ drivers electricians and uh, part-time uh, general labor the federal government uh, does maintain its own uh, job search website or uh, job postings website to get there go to jobbank.gc.ca and you'll see here that you can search uh, they post jobs on here all across the country uh, so you can search in a certain area so we'll try Windsor Ontario and see what that that gets us so you'll see here that there's a number of job postings in Windsor um, a number of them have been posted recently um, what you will find is that some of these job postings will also be on other sites uh, but there are some unique ones so it's a good idea to search um, all of these websites on a regular basis so that you don't miss out on a great opportunity. If you want to work for the City of Windsor directly again you're going to visit the City of Windsor website at citywindsor.ca and rather than going to the four residents tab that we went to before we're going to go to City Hall and then employment opportunities and this is where the uh, City of Windsor posts the externally the jobs up available to uh, the public um, working directly for the city. So we're going to go here in the middle to city job postings. 
and this is your list of current openings. And what you'll notice about uh, Studio Windsor postings, usually when they're posted externally, they are temporary uh, positions. Um, it is pretty rare that a position gets posted externally that's a permanent position. In this case, uh, there is one position, the Certified Automotive Service Technician, that is being posted as a permanent position. But for the most part, they do get um, posted as temporary positions. So in that case, you would need to get into a temporary position and start applying internally to um, to permanent positions. You'll find that's the same uh, for a lot of large organizations, uh, especially public, uh, publicly funded, um, the University of Windsor, St. Clair College, uh, the provincial and federal governments all sort of operate under this a similar uh, system where they're normally hiring externally in a uh, temporary capacity. So just requires a little bit of patience, a little bit of uh, faith in yourself that you know, you'll make a good impression and that you'll be able to um, get yourself a permanent position uh, you know, in the end. WorkforceWindsorEssex.com is a great resource for job seekers um, or even just people that are looking for information about the local job market. So if you visit WorkforceWindsorEssex.com, you'll see all of their tools for job seekers and the different information that they provide about the local labor market. Um, some of the job seeker uh, tools, uh, we're going to click here on resources for job seekers and I'll show you just a couple of them. Um, there's a whole bunch, but they do have the traditional um, job board. So the We Jobs board just lists all the current opportunities in Windsor Essex with the uh, job descriptions and such. Uh, but they also have uh, something, uh, my favorite tool is the We Map Jobs tool right here in the middle. And so if you click here, it actually presents all of those job opportunities um, on a map. So if you wanted to concentrate your job search in a certain area of the city, um, you know, or you wanted to see where they were located, if they're on a bus route, those kind of things, you can look at areas of the city and uh, see the different opportunities that are available in that area. So that's the WeMap uh, tool at WorkforceWindsorEssex.com. The Not Code Search is not a website you're going to go to uh, to find uh, current job opportunities. It's more so a tool that you're going to use to uh, help you create your resume and just for informational purposes. So uh, if you go ahead and search for National Occupational Classification and go to this first link here, uh, what the Not Codes are is basically a way for the federal government to group occupations into, into categories. Um, so what we're going to do just to show you kind of uh, what type of information is available is we're going to put in a job title. So let's say in the past I had been a mechanical engineer. I'm going to type that in and see what kind of information I can find. So we're going to search for mechanical engineer and it's going to give us a few different uh, options here. But we're going to go to the one that most uh, closely reflects what we're looking for. So 2132 is a mechanical engineer. So we're going to click on that. It's going to give you some sample uh, job titles that uh, mechanical engineers may have. Uh, but more importantly, it's going to give you a list of the main duties. And this is kind of a list of the day-to-day -day work that a uh, mechanical engineer may perform. So if you're looking for ways to describe your work on your resume, this is a really great um, tool to use. And so all of these uh, descriptions are using industry standard terms. Uh, so these are terms that a hiring manager that's hiring a mechanical engineer is going to recognize and uh, you know just way, ways that you can describe your work in a professional way. So this is really great. The other thing that it gives you is a description of uh, what would be required in order to be a mechanical engineer. So you know a bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering in this case would most likely be required. So that is the not code search. I encourage you to to search out you know, occupations that you might be interested in or things that you've done in the past in order to help you to fill in your resume. So with those websites, I did just give you a brief synopsis, but I do encourage you to go and explore those websites on your own and, and kind of spend some time exploring those tools. I'm going to go into some tips for online applications now. So increasingly, uh, job applications are being done online. 
So you're, you're searching for employment and you're asked by employers to apply on their website, apply through Indeed or some other uh, recruitment website. Uh, when you're applying on these websites, they're most likely using some sort of resume scanning software. And the purpose of that is to sort of screen applicants uh, to go from you know maybe the thousands of applications down to a couple hundred. So um, if your application or your resume uh, doesn't clearly identify your skills and abilities and experience, uh, your resume never may never be seen by a human. It may just be uh, screened out by these uh, software programs. So uh, what we want to do is we want to make sure that when you're submitting your resume that it's very simple. Uh, and by simple I mean you know, not using charts, pictures, things like that, uh, and using a very simple font. Uh, we recommend Arial or Times Roman, Times New Roman. Um, you may have a, a nicer version of your resume that's unique and shows some personality, and you know, keep that resume because you'll still hand it out when you're applying. You know, in person, um, you can also use that resume to uh, give to the hiring manager when you get to the interview stage. So keep that resume. That's still important. Uh, but when you're applying online, uh, these software programs don't care about pictures and charts and things like that. So, um, you know, just make sure it's very simple. Again, Times New Roman or Arial, no pictures and no charts. Uh, the other thing about these software programs is when they're scanning your resume, they're searching for keywords. And most often, um, there are clues to the keywords that they're searching, and it's right in the job description. So it's in the job description or the qualifications, the required qualifications for the job. There's exactly the wording as what they're looking for in your resume or your cover letter. So we want to, what we want to do is we want to make sure that the words that are in the job description or the qualifications are on your resume or in your cover letter. Um, and make sure, if you, know, if you can, that it's exact. So if in the job description they're asking for three years of sales experience, Make sure on your cover letter or your resume it says that you've got three or five or ten years of sales experience. So, you know, avoiding things like if it does say sales experience, don't say that your experience is in retail. They are the same thing, but the, the software program may not make that connection. So, you know, make sure that those are the same. If you want to kind of try to avoid uh, the amount of editing of your resume that you're doing, um, try to use some industry standard terms. So in the previous slide, we showed you the NOC uh, code search and, and kind of what that can do for you. Um, use those NOC code search to, to uh, identify what the industry standard terms are for the jobs that you're applying for and put those in your resume. Because in all likelihood, when the job description is uh, put out there, it's using those exact terms. So, Put those in your resume and cover letter. Then, when it comes to applying, you know it's just a quick edit and not switching it all all together. Um, make sure when you're filling out the form. So, a, a lot of times, you're attaching your resume to uh, a job ad. You're also required to fill out some forms, and they're asking you things like, "What's your job experience? What are your skills? Uh, what's your education?" And all that information is on your resume. So, the temptation is to say, "See resume." Uh, we want to avoid that. Uh, the problem is, is when you're filling out those forms, those are used to filter out uh, qu folks that aren't qualified for the job. So if you're just putting C resume, chances are your resume is never going to get seen by a, again by a human being. So make sure you're filling in those forms. I know it, sound, it seems monotonous, seems like a lot of work, uh, but it'll be worth it in the end. Um, do include a cover letter if you can. It just shows that you're putting some extra effort. And it's another opportunity to include those important keywords uh, and get those noticed by the software. Uh, we do recommend that you only uh, apply uh, by the method identified in the job description. So, you know, if it does say apply online, don't show up at the store or the office with your resume. Uh, what that shows is that uh, you're either not able to follow instructions or you didn't read the whole job description. And so, you know, most times employers aren't going to appreciate that necessarily that extra effort. So apply online. If you want to follow up with an email or a phone call in a, you know, a week or two later, I think that's a good idea. Um, so when it comes to applying online for jobs, we want you to apply for jobs that 
you're qualified for and jobs that uh, you would accept if you, if you were offered the position. So use your time wisely. Your, your time is valuable. Um, apply to jobs that you want. Apply to jo jobs that you're qualified for. Um, when you're applying for work, it's really about the quality of your applications and not the quantity of your applications. So take the time to make sure you've got the keywords, the right keywords, that you created a cover letter. Um, the last thing we want is for you to apply for a position, get all the way to the point of being offered the job and having to turn it down because um, you know the wage isn't what you expected or, or something along those lines. Problem is, is that's then a bridge that you've burned, and you know maybe down the road another opportunity comes up with that company, and they won't consider you because you know they've gone through the whole process with you before. So, uh, again, quality over quantity. Um, do take into account the transportation and childcare, um, you know, required for the position. So think about where it is. Think about what time you're starting work. You know, if you have daycare or you have uh, somebody that can take care of your children but they aren't available till 8 a.m., don't apply to a job that starts at 7 unless you have some other alternative. Um, when it comes to transportation in Windsor-Essex, we've got, you know, Old Castle, there's a whole bunch of factories, dozens of factories that offer all kinds of positions in, you know, general labor and skilled trades and administrative positions. Problem is, it's out by the 401. It's really hard to get to. Uh, the buses go there but they're sporadic. Uh, right now, I think the earliest bus that arrives in, in, in the area arrives at 7.45 a.m. So if you rely on the bus and the job starts at 7 or 6 or even 5.30, um, you know, that's going to be very difficult for you. So always take that into account. Um, and finally, just in regards to remote work, so there are positions that may identify that you can work from home or work remotely. Uh, when that uh, is indicated, in the, in the job description, just consider that that might be a temporary solution and that you may be required to go into work, um, you know, three or six months down the road. Just keep that in mind. So just continuing with the online job search. So we do identify here on the screen a few uh, websites that um, actually are specialized job boards. So these are industry specific. Uh, job boards. Um, these are just a few. There's literally hundreds. Uh, Charity Village specializes in jobs for nonprofit. Uh, Goodwork.ca has a number of jobs in the green sector. Uh, SIRC is uh, jobs in sports. Uh, if you are interested in free, freelance type work, so if you know you build websites for people or you can do copy editing, things like that. Um, Upwork.ca is, is one of many uh, sites that you can go to to kind of uh, advertise what you're able to do and you know, potentially get like uh, freelance type jobs. Um, and then IT World Canada is one that's in construction right now and should be available soon. So again, these are just a few. Uh, what we would encourage you to do is seek out uh, specific uh, job boards for the, um, the field that you're interested in working in. And, uh, and check those out, especially if you're, if you're willing to relocate, because a lot of these sites will have jobs across Ontario or across Canada, um, you know, and, and, and maybe great opportunities for you if you're willing to go somewhere, you know, for a couple of years or even, you know, permanently. So uh, the other thing that you can do is if there are companies that you're interested in working at, um, check their website regularly, like go back every couple of weeks or once a month even. Uh, to see if they have jobs posted, because a lot of, uh, of uh, companies will post their jobs to their website um, even before maybe they put it on Indeed or one of the other job posting sites. So, uh, you know, you might be the first to get your application in uh, if you're visiting that website regularly. As far as social media goes, so uh, obviously um, of increasingly increasing importance, uh, social media, and when you're job searching, it's especially important. Uh, that you maintain a professional, um, maintain your professionalism online. And, you know, if there are things that you don't think your boss should be seeing or, you know, your potential boss, uh, making sure those are behind, you know, privacy screens and things like that. So uh, keep your image uh, suitable for employers. It is not unusual or illegal for employers to seek your social media out if they're considering hiring you. 
Um, there was a survey done in 2017 that identified that 70% of employers uh, will look at a person's social media before they offer them a position. Um, it's not illegal. That information is in the public domain. Um, there are situations where it could be seen, deemed illegal or, or you know, employers could get themselves into trouble if they, for example, uh, noticed that you had a, a certain disability and didn't offer you a position based on that, that would be considered discrimination and, and you, could, you could sue them for that. But just, just looking, it, there's nothing illegal about that. So keep that in mind. Um, you know, your private life is your private life. You can consider creating a separate profile for your, you know, your social media and keeping it behind uh, privacy screens. Um, but, you know, keep in mind that you never know if somebody wants to uh, screenshot something and use it against you in the future. You know, it might be somebody that's a friend or a colleague now. You don't know down the road what might happen. So, um, you know, keep that in mind. The other thing to keep in mind is when you're talking online, um, try not to talk about your former employers, especially in a negative light. Um, if an employer looks at your social media and they see that you're talking uh, poorly about your previous employer, uh, they're obviously going to jump to the conclusion that you're going to talk uh, poorly about them as well, uh, you know, in the future if things don't go well. So try to avoid that. Try to avoid, if you can, topics, you know, that might be deemed controversial, politics, religion, things like that. Um, again, if it's, you know, if you have to, just make sure the posts are private. Um, you can use social media to network and just create and maintain relationships with people. That is the great thing about social media. And you know the positives about social media maybe aren't spoken enough ab about enough. Um, but yes, you can maintain contact with people that you knew 20 years ago in high school or uh, things like that. And those people could end up being leads to jobs. You never know. Um, so you know, I encourage people. You know reach out to people, say happy birthday to people, just keep a, you know, just, just to be friendly, but also, you know, it could work in your advantage in the future if you are looking for employment, so um, do that. And the other thing is, is you can follow uh, companies on social media, similar to what I was talking about with websites. Uh, companies will often post jobs on their Facebook account or Twitter or, uh, or on LinkedIn. And so that brings us to the final point of getting a LinkedIn profile. So. You know, there's social media, which is, you know, for your friends and your family and things. And then there's LinkedIn, which really is about your job search. So in terms of LinkedIn, just a few things in regards to your LinkedIn profile. So if you think about it as kind of your online resume, um, that might be helpful. So, you know, keep your LinkedIn profile obviously professional and up to date. Um, as things change and your experience increases, make sure you, you put those updates onto your LinkedIn profile. Uh, when you're doing your photo, think about what type of job you're trying to get or what type of job is your dream job. If in your dream job you're wearing a suit, um, maybe wear a suit in your LinkedIn profile picture. Uh, it just helps for employers to see you and be able to picture you in the job. Um, Load your profile with keywords, again, similar to your resume and cover letter. Think about the industry standard terms and try to get those into your LinkedIn profile as much as possible. Um, there are plenty of opportunities on LinkedIn to uh, join discussion boards and, um, and follow different topics related to your chosen profession. Uh, if you can and you have something to add and it's positive, uh, participate in those uh, groups because it might get you noticed by a hiring manager or you know somebody that works at a company or somebody that can help you with a job lead in the future. So um, be active on LinkedIn, I guess, is the bottom line. Um, follow companies that you're interested in. Get some information about the companies on their LinkedIn pages. Um, and again, they're probably posting employment opportunities on their LinkedIn as well. So um, you know, follow as many companies as you can uh, that you, know, you would consider uh, working for. Um, the other thing you can do is, is if you know people that work at that company, um, either just you know as staff there or as HR or hiring uh, managers there, uh, make them connections on LinkedIn. You can even even if you don't know a person, you can. There's no harm in reaching out to them and adding them as a connection. Um, HR people are really good about 
of being helpful as long as you kind of identify what it is you're doing there. So, you know, let them know I was on your page. I'm looking for information about this company. I'm really intrigued by it and would love to work there. Um, I just want to ask you some questions about, you know, what it takes to, to work there and what types of things I can do to prepare for a job there. So um, you can do that for sure. Um, the other thing to do with your LinkedIn is you can add your LinkedIn profile to your resume, um, especially if you're submitting it online. Uh, in order to do that, um, the sort of default uh, URL that LinkedIn uses is a, a bit of a long uh, jumble of letters and numbers. Uh, you can actually customize it, and so we have a video that explains how to do that um, so that you, you can, first of all, shorten it, make it easy to remember, and, uh, and then you can add it to your resume. So this video explains how to do that. Hey guys, in this video, I want to show you how to create a simple LinkedIn URL that's easy to remember for your LinkedIn profile. And it's actually super simple. So once you log into your LinkedIn, go to this icon, Me, and then click on Settings and Privacy. And then from there, click on Privacy, and then click on Edit Your Public Profile. I'm gonna click on Change. It's gonna open a, another page. And here are your public profile settings. And if you look on this side, edit public profile URL. Enhance your personal brand by creating a custom URL for your LinkedIn profile. So what you want to do is click on the pencil icon and that's it. This is where you can brand your LinkedIn profile URL and make it super easy for people to find you on search engines like Google. You will actually start ranking on Google for your name also so a couple of things here make sure you use your first name first name and last name if that's available if not you can add some middle initial or another variation in my case i'm using the number 2k at the end the reason is first my name was already taken i could not claim that url seems like there are a lot of ali mirza out there on linkedin and then I picked Ali Mirza 2K because I have the same username on Twitter and Instagram. So I'm branding, I'm using the same name across different social media marketing channels. And once you add it to your public profile URL, save it and that's it. Okay, so uh, increasingly uh, interviews are being done not in person, but uh, over the internet on platforms like Zoom or Google Meeting um, and this comes with advantages and disadvantages. There are definitely some pitfalls, but there's way to, ways to take advantage of that as well. So uh, we'll talk briefly about that. So the first thing you wanna do when you find out you've got an interview on Zoom or, or meetings or anything like that is download the platform, uh, get used to it, practice it with your friends, um, you know, go on there and figure out how to mute yourself, how to, you know, make sure the video is working, make sure your lighting is good, make sure, you know, wherever you're going to be doing your interview that uh, the, the picture is clear, that there's not a light that's like right over your head right here or something like that. Um, and then obviously once you have your interview, make sure it's, it's quiet. The background is, is important. The background can be just something very... Uh, simple, you know, a bookcase, some diplomas, things like that. Um, you, as far as what you wear, make sure that you're wearing something uh, probably like a solid color would be preferable. Um, stripes and things like that don't necessarily um, transmit very well over video always. Um, dress and act professionally, you know, dress and act like you're sitting across from the person in their office. Right, um, you know, just because the video or the interview is over video doesn't give you permission to to show up in your pajamas or anything like that, right? So, um, make make eye contact with the camera as opposed to the screen. So when you're looking, you know, your temptation will be to look at the person and they're on the screen. Uh, try to avoid that. If you look right into the camera, they'll be able to see your face and and your um, reactions and things like that. So. Um, think more so not about what you see, but what they see on their screen. Um, you can create a cheat sheet, and what we mean by that is, um, you know, anything that's behind the camera, 
is is fair game. Like it's, as long as it's not making noise, it's not going to show up on the video. So you know you can put post-it notes up or big signs that remind you about uh, you know words that you want to use or experiences that you want to uh, portray in your in your interview answers. Um, you know put as many as you as you as you can or you want. Um, try to avoid actually just reading um, answers. You know from behind the screen or behind the camera. But you can certainly, you know, put up reminders for yourself if you want to do that. Um, the next uh, couple of slides here, uh, we did talk about, uh, so signing a PDF. So um, again, when you uh, are applying for a job, sometimes there's a job application, sometimes it requires a signature. Uh, you can do that online. Um, they once, you know, hopefully you get a job, they can. Employers may send you a um, a job offer and, and require a signature. Um, even in your day-to-day -day life, there might be situations where you have to sign a banking document, a loan document, a, um, a real estate document, things like that. And again, if they're in a PDF form or even any sort of Word document, you can do that on your phone. Um, most places are accepting digital signatures, so um, the next couple videos explain, the first one explains how to do so on an Android. It does require you to download an app, uh, so this video explains that. Hi everyone, uh, today I'm going to show you how to use the Adobe Fill and Sign app available in the Play Store for Android devices. Uh, this app is generally used to sign documents that are already filled out, so you might have been sent a job application or a lease agreement or maybe even a job offer and you want to sign it, you can use this app to do so. So I'm going to go ahead and open it. Uh, this is the first screen that comes up. Uh, you're going to select a form to fill out. So I'm going to press right on the blue cross right at the top middle there. And it gives the option to open a PDF file um, or open a photo from your library or take a picture of a, of a document to sign. So I have a PDF that I want to sign, so I'm going to click on that. Um, and this is a job application that presumably would be filled out, uh, but it does require a signature, you can see in the bottom right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the little marker at the top a little bit to the right, and I'm going to click that and create a signature. So your screen's going to go a little bit sideways there, but I'm going to use my finger to draw a signature on my screen. And I'm not really happy with how that turned out, so I can hit clear in the bottom right, I'll go ahead and do that and I'm going to try again a uh, little bit better so I'm going to click done in the top right once I'm happy with my signature and what I need to do now is go back to the little marker and click right on top of the signature I created and it's going to drop it into the document um, so I can use my thumb or my finger to move this around wherever I need it I'm going to go ahead and drop it right on right in the signature box and it's a little bit big, so I can use this little blue circle here to make it bigger or smaller. I just drag my finger there as well. Um, so I'll make it a little bit smaller so it fits. And I've got my signed document ready for sharing. So I'm going to share that either by email or text message. Okay, so that's how to sign a PDF using an Android. Uh, pretty simple. Uh, the good news is if you have an iPhone, it's even simpler. It doesn't even require an app. Uh, this video explains how to sign a PDF with an Apple uh, device. Need to sign documents on the go? You can sign PDFs or images with markup in mail. Tap an attachment to open it. Now, tap markup in the upper right corner. Next, tap add in the lower right corner and tap signature. Use your finger to sign your name. Then tap Done. Once your signature is in the document, you can move it by tapping and dragging like this. Or resize it by tapping and dragging one corner like this. When your signature is where you want it, tap Done and send the message right back. For more helpful tips like this, subscribe to the Apple Support Channel or click another video to keep watching now.
so that's signing a PDF with an Apple. Um, you can also sign a PDF on your desktop if that's what you're using, laptop or a desktop computer, and this video explains how to do that. Let's take a look at the fill and sign feature of Adobe Sign, which allows you to upload a document you've been sent and fill in the fields before adding your signature. To get started, click on fill and sign, and then click on add files to add a document. We have three options to upload the document. We can use a library document. We can use a document that we've stored in the cloud, like Box, Dropbox, or Google Drive. Or we can just upload a file from our computer, which is the option I'll choose here. I just select the file and click Open. And I'm just going to change the name of the document here and then click on Next. So here's the document I need to fill out. And there are a few fields that I need to enter information, and I can do that with these tools here at the top. The text tool is selected by default, so I'll start with that. I just click wherever I need to add text and then start typing. So I use this to fill out any information required in the document. I'm adding my title down here and the date. And then I'm going to need to sign this document. To do that, I select the sign icon up here. It gives me three options, signature, initials, or digital signature. If I want to add the digital signature, I just click on this option and follow through the steps. I'll need to have a digital ID set up, or if I don't, I can set one up by clicking on this link and following the steps. So let's go back and add a normal signature. Click Add Signature, and the default option comes up immediately, which is a font-based signature. I can also draw my signature, and this is best used on a mobile device, so I can use my finger. I can upload an image of my signature, or I can use my mobile device to capture my signature in real time. So I'm going to use the default font-based signature. I click Apply, and then I use my mouse to drag the signature to the appropriate location on the document. Then I click Done. Now I'm presented with a number of options. I can send a copy of the document to someone else. I can download a copy, manage it, or sign another. So let's click on Manage this document and see the other options that come up. This takes us to the Manage tab. Here's the document I just signed, and I have the usual options, including opening to view, downloading, and sharing with another person. So that uh, completes the information today on online job searching. There's plenty more information out there, and if you have questions, uh, feel free to reach out. Our contact information is on the next slide. Um, I do want to make you aware of the other workshops that are available on our website. Uh, there's a resume workshop, um, and then another separate workshop on specifically cover letters and references. They'll probably talk about keywords a lot on that, in that workshop as well. Uh, there's a, another workshop on interview skills. Um, there's the two workshops on job search. So if you haven't watched the introduction or the general job search workshop, I encourage you to go back and do so. And then there's uh, a workshop on second career and uh, what is required or what the qualifications are for second career. So check all those out on our website, uh, ets4success.ca, um, or through the City of Windsor website. Okay. Um, if you have questions about this or any of the workshops, feel free to give us a call, 519-977-6444, extension 5520. If you have questions about the job search workshop specifically, you can ask to speak to a job developer if you'd like, uh, but if you have just general questions, just call that extension and uh, they'll get you to who you need to speak to. Thanks for listening and uh, hope you enjoyed it.